and five we are back again on the people's paradise podcast today green pies apple lemons we are here doing it again let's go let's go let's go excuse me got a burp back here again uh, it's probably gonna be the last episode for the day um I was going to record another one when I got back to the crib, but decided not to stupid because I feel like I gave y'all enough content. I'm giving y'all enough content. I'm giving y'all at least about four to five hours of great content a day. So I think I'm, I think I'm being, as far as I can tell, I think I'm being pretty generous with the podcast content. Hey, yo, salute to my man. Um, salute to my man. Um, what's that boy's name? I can't remember his name. I was just talking about him. Salute to my man, Brandon, Britton, Broxton, whatever his name is. The library that I'm recording this podcast in right now, in one of the side rooms in the library, he actually did this thing where he took a bunch of retro games, like the retro games from the Sega, from Nintendo. You know all them games that you and your older brother used to play back in the day. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, then use a good friend I have called Wikipedia to figure it out. Shout out to M211. What's up with you, baby? He did this thing where he set up like in the room, this retro gaming thing going on. And, you know, he's introduced, like, because the library, the library is adjacent to adjacent to actual, like, middle school, science middle school, some stuff like that. So, he's basically introducing all these retro games, like, from the Super Nintendo, from the Sega era, to all these kids who have no idea what the hell that is. Or they might have, they probably have some clue what it is, but to them, they probably look, they're looking at Super Nintendo how, how I used to look at the Atari. Like, it's something that was so foreign and so wild away. And you know what's weird is, too, and I want to talk about this, because there's this misconception that everybody who was born in the 90s, everybody who was born in the 80s, when we played video games, we didn't know, like, even though if you compare the video games of that era to the video games that we have now, if you compare the Super Nintendo to the Xbox 360, you compare the Sega to a PS4, even though you can compare them and say that obviously the PS4 is of so much better, higher quality, so much better action, so much more funner. There's this misconception that they say that when we played the games back then, we didn't know that they sucked. We didn't know that they were. We didn't know that they sucked. We didn't know that the graphics were terrible. Nigga, let me tell you that right now. That's a very, that is a very incorrect assumption because I'm going to tell you right now, as a child, when I played those games, the very first time I got a second, I'll never forget. The very first time I got a Sega Genesis, my mom bought me a Sega Genesis. That was my first video game console. And when I got that Sega Genesis... She also bought a game for me called Aladdin. This was the first Aladdin game to actually be on a video game console. It was the first Aladdin game. When I put that goddamn game in the console, the first thing that came into my mind is, this don't look nothing like the picture on the video game box. <laughs> like, 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 because on the video game box of Aladdin, on the video game box, the video game box, the the cover of the video, the cover of the video game box, the picture looks on a lot of levels like the actual cover on the video cassette tape. But if you play the game, the game don't look nothing like the the game look like it look like. It looked like they. It looked like they gave me the game and they gave me the box, the video game, and and, and mixed it and traded out with a cheaper ass game for a uh, cheaper ass game. I didn't know about it. Like the first time I put that game in for a plane, I was really so like I I couldn't believe it. I was in disbelief. I was like, "This is what I'm going. This is what this is what, this is what my mama bought me." Like I just it threw me off. But we kind of dealt with it. But. It's interesting, man. It's interesting when I think back and compare all the video games I used to play back then to the games I might play now. Because now I kind of fell out of video games. Like, I don't even, I, I really don't even, I haven't touched a video game controller in a long time. Like, I, I just, I haven't really been into them anymore. I think half of the reason, I think the reason why I haven't been into them is, well, for a couple of reasons. I mean, one, I don't know, why haven't I been into video games? It's actually a good question. You know what? It's kind of strange. I, I think I got some reasons why. I think one of the reasons why I'm not so into video games so much is because, well, one is like, I think one thing, one thing to consider is, is with video games nowadays, I'm not just, I think I got so much more energy balled up in me now. Like my body holds so much more energy. I'm more excited about things now. I think like when I would play video games as a kid, I think it was a video game at the end of the day is, an, is a pastime. And I think People buy video games, people buy TV, people watch TV shows with the thought that these are supposed to be the most entertaining forms of pastime 
when we're not doing anything. You know what I mean? Like these are watching TV shows on Netflix, watching shows on Hulu. These are supposed to be the most entertaining activities outside of the regular day to day life and work and stuff like that. But for me, the most entertaining thing for me, honestly, is getting on this podcast. Like I love podcasting. I love broadcasting. This is the thing that I love to do the most. So. To me, this is the most exciting thing. But what I compare it to, if I compare it to like a, if I ever compare doing this to, to if I would, if I would, I would, I, would, I could obviously, honestly, I could do this for 10 hours straight without breaking this wood, having a real honest good time versus comparing it, versus comparing it to me doing it, versus comparing it to me, um, versus me comparing it to me doing it at a, um, Doing a, a whole four or five season binge watch on Netflix. And by the way, I binge watched both seasons of Young Justice. <laughs> Shout out to Kira Rana for six. I binge watched both seasons. I binge watched both seasons of new of Young Justice on Netflix about two days ago on Sunday. No, Saturday was Saturday. On Saturday, literally one of the best shows that we had out. That's one of the shows that was so good. I halfway in my heart, I wish they would produce another season, like a third season to, for me to watch. But I know for a fact that you ain't just because. I don't know, it was a good show. That was I've, I've been saying I've always said this all the time. Long time was, uh, my man Kier when LF six he said, Long time we'll see what's up with you. What's up with you, man? How you doing, man? How you doing today, baby? What's going on with you, buddy? Man, now I've been good, relaxing, chillaxing, eating cherries, hunting for oranges, doing the same thing as always, podcasting, letting the people know what's going on in these streets. Like that. Straight like that. That way. But I don't know. Yeah, shout out to Young Justice. Yeah, shout out to Young Justice. That was a good. You know what? A lot of the a lot of the best programs that I used to watch when I was a kid. Young Justice was one of them. Justice League Unlimited was one of them. I kind of binge watched the first season of Justice League Unlimited. Still lovely. Still a great show. Still a great show. And that's another misconception. That's another misconception that people got. I've missed like four. Don't know why, but I ain't missing this one. Appreciate that, man. You got one person who knows what's up in the world. Thank you, man. I appreciate that. Yeah, I that was one show I used to watch all the time was Justice League Unlimited. The first, you know what? The first Justice League show they had, I didn't like that. You know what I'm talking about, bro? Uh, Justice League Unlimited. You ever seen that one before? Like the cartoon show they used to have on Cartoon Network? Justice League Unlimited. Very, very great show. Great my favorite, I like that one. I like Justice League Unlimited because on that one, you had all the different superheroes. You had all the superheroes from around the world. You had Green Arrow. You had Speedy. You had Black Canary. You had everybody. You didn't just have Flash, uh, Orion. You didn't just have Flash, Green Lantern, Superman, Batman, Wonder Woman, Hot Girl. You had everybody from all four or five corners of the world or the earth. And it was a cool one. Yeah, we had some good. You know what? There's always been great cartoons. There's always been great cartoons. I think sometimes people think that if you were born in a certain time period, you have to think that all that shit from that time period was great. And it ain't like that, because I can tell you right now, I was born in the 90s, and there was a lot of cartoons from the 90s, from the early 2000s that everybody else liked and I didn't like. Like, prime example, Johnny Bravo. Johnny Bravo was kind of cool. Johnny Bravo was a cool character. He was cool. Y'all might not know what I'm talking about, Johnny Bravo, but I wasn't feeling him. I thought he was kind of corny. I fuck with Cow and Chicken. My cartoons, my top, matter of fact, I'll say it right now. My top cartoons, if I can name all my top cartoons, my top cartoons was Cow and Chicken. What's up, Obama? Shout out to my man, Tyro96. What's up with you, man? Views from the 96. My top cartoons when I was a kid was Cow and Chicken, Johnny, not Johnny Bravo, Cow and Chicken, Dexter's Laboratory, Gargoyles. I heavily fucked with Gargoyles. When I tell you, I heavily, if I had Gargoyles on repeat, I love Gar. To this day, I still watch Gargoyles. Matter of fact, I'm gonna ask you because I wonder if it, I don't know how I don't know how many people listen to this right now are actually grown adults. How many of y'all still watch cartoons? How many of y'all over the age of eighteen still watch cartoons? I still watch them to this day. I still watch them to this day. What did you eat? What did you eat? I met I met horse. I I ate a I ate a bowl of horse pussy. I ate a, if you want to get a voice this deep, eat horse pussy. Remember, JT told that horse pussy. Horse pussy will do it for you. When you was young, when you was young, best days of your life, man, real man. I mean, I still, I still binge watching. That's why I like Netflix too, because Netflix got a lot of the good shit. Next, shout out to Nico sixty nine AM. Netflix, get, Netflix got a lot of the good cartoons. They got the good shit. Young, they got the. Uh, how tall are you? I am six one. I am six. I am six one. Horse had no. Pu- horse had no pussy. <laughs> that's what it said. Horse had no pussy. <laughs> you actually tried it. I'm, I'm surprised you actually tried it. That's cool. But I, th- yeah, man, yeah, I, we had some good, we had some good, we had some good, we had some good times back then. 
I'm six. I'm six seven. <laughs> I have. I feel like you know what's that's the only thing I'm gonna tell you. That's the only thing I'm gonna say. That's the only thing I don't like having about my voice is I've I've met baby about. I've met in real life and regular day to day life. I've met about four or five people who have a voice like as deep as mine or deeper. About four people, and all of them have always been taller than me. Like it, it, it's the most insecure. It's the most insecure feeling you can ever feel. You every motherfucker you meet who has your voice, they all this much taller than you. There was this one. I remember this one. I remember this one guy. He. Um, this is dude I met when I was doing stand up comedy in San Diego. He hella cool too. He's actually a um, he's actually a singer. He does uh, rock music. I remember I walked up to him, I was like, hey, what's up with you man, JT? That nigga talked my whole body for like like it just it scared the shit out of me. <laughs> Excuse my language. That, it, it, that was the first time that was the only time somebody spoke in it and it kind of scared me. I was like, what the what what happened? Right. Like, well, you can get girls, you can get girls in law. It were I am not gonna lie to you, it does help with the females. I ain't gonna lie to you. It's it's a great asset with the females. But you know, I was talking to somebody about this, and maybe this is just from my personal experience. But it kind it kinda comes it kinda it does help with the females, but it kinda comes at a price. And I was and this is just from my experience. Somebody else might tell you different. Like if I'm trying to talk to a girl and like you know, I try to hit. I try to hit it with the sexy shit. Like, hey, how you doing? Like, hey, what's up? Well, you know, I'm doing it with the sexy. Like, hey, how you doing? You look nice today, young lady. You doing pretty lady? What's up with you? If I hit it with that, it always I can't. Ex- it always guarantees attraction. It guarantees attraction. But the catch is, is you can't. How can I put it in a, in a way? You can't really. You have to stay in that mode. If that makes sense, like so, if I talk to her like that, I gotta stay in that mode. I can't, cause me and personally, I like to joke around. I like to play around. I like to joke around a lot. If I'm all, but if I'm in the I'm front of sexy type of mode, I can't step outside of that mode. I gotta really stay in the sweet whisper, sweet nothings, and talk like Tank in every at the beginning of every record he does type of mode. So it gets kind of played out after a while, but you know, my cross to bear. You know, it is, it is. but more than more than I don't know how I got this sidetracked. I said I say all that to say this. Paki Quinn, this must be a Pakistan Pakistani lady. How you doing? Shout out to everybody from Pakistan. What's going on with you? But yeah, Pakistan. Pac Man is a good one. Pac Man was a terrible game, and I remember playing Pac. I remember playing Pac Man as a kid and thinking this game sucked. That like a lot of them. That's what I was saying. Like a lot of them games, we even though we like even though even though those games on the Nintendo sixty four, even though those games on N sixty four on Sega Genesis, even though we knew shout out to Angel, how you doing? Even though that was all we had, we still knew those games suck. Like I like I said, when I played Pac Man, I mentally thought as a kid, I mentally thought this game sucks. When I played Mario Brothers, I knew for I knew while playing the game that it sucked. Nasrin Ari said, Nasrin Abrar said, where are you originally from? I am originally from Northern California, Northern California, slash San Francisco, slash Sacramento, slash Visalia, slash San Diego, slash Arizona, slash Alabama, slash Georgia. I have lived everywhere. But I'd say the state that created me, the state that kind of molded who I am is Northern California. I'm from California. California. The best state in the whole country. If you want to come to the United States of America for a visit, for a tourist visit, the best place to kick with your feet on the beach and drink a peach a peach cooler is come to the beaches of Sunnyside, California. This is where it's popping at. This is where the fun is at. This is where the best is at. Oh, I'll be pushing. I ain't look. I low key be pushing the hella hard ass line for for California. They bet the government, California state government, better start paying me for uh, advertisement because I'll be advertising shit out of my state on here. Uh, California knows how to party. Gal- California knows how to party. In the city, the city of work. In the city. I might do that. Matter of fact, I'm thinking about doing like a cross country trip of uh through California, like go from the top to the bottom, cause I've lived I've lived in most I've lived in most areas in California. I've lived in SoCal, I've lived in LA, I've lived in San Diego, I've lived in Central Valley, I've lived in Northern Cal. I've never been to that part of California that's past San Francisco. Like to those of y'all who aren't from California, when you look into California, a lot of times when you think of California, you just think of San Francisco, gay capital, LA, 
second gate capital, San Diego beaches, and Central Valley, y'all probably don't really care about. There's like a whole region of Northern California above San Francisco that nobody literally gives a fuck about. It just everybody ignores this, like all trees, woodland, and geysers, and old white people. Like it's just it's like it's all it's all that is up there. That part of California I've never got to explore. I'm gonna try to go up there this summer. Matter of fact, my family does this thing where they like go camping, like go camping once on July 4th. I'm thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna try to do it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try to go. I'm gonna try to go up there and see what it's like up there in the mountains, up there in the hills and mountains. And that's the best. That's the really that's the best thing about coming to California is because when you come here, like the state's so diverse. When you come to California, you got so you got so much. Like you come here, you got when you come here, man, you got everything. You got. Geysers, you got deserts, you got mountains, you got snow, you got like you can literally, literally. Uh, California is like Africa and South America combined in one. You know, minus the snakes and monkeys. But we got snakes, we ain't got monkeys. But it's the best stuff out here. It's the best stuff. It's the best out here. They, no matter if I'm gonna ask, I'm gonna ask any. But anybody on the podcast, I want to ask you. You are picking everybody listening, YouTube live commenters, people on my podcast, live podcast, people in the Periscope. Everybody, what is the what is the best place you ever been to in your life? Copy. What's the best place you ever been to in your life? Best state, best city, best vacation. Where's the best place? Let's see, I got one person coming on the podcast when he said best place is. Oh, you've been to Tahiti. Also, oh, you've been to Tahiti. Okay, shout out to you. We're gonna run and accomplish my dream without me. Shout out to my man Ronnie. He been to he, Tahiti. Okay, that's what's up. Yeah, Tahiti. Now Tahiti is beautiful. I've seen. I've I've made I have made the islands of Bora Bora many times a background on many of my phones, man. I loved I always want to go to Tahiti. I want to go to Tahiti. I want to go to the Canary Islands. One person also said Miami, Florida. Eh, that's, a, that's a good one. Miami's a good one. Miami's a good pick. Miami's a good pick. I like Miami. I've never been to Miami, but I just read a lot about the culture there. When I was a child, I wanted to go to Miami a lot because I read about how when you go out there, you have the big Latino community out there, you have the big Cuban American community, and I've always loved Lat. I've always loved Latin American. I uh, shout out to Nigel and Abra who said, oh, yeah, "I know that you're African American, but you know where in Africa where your great granddad was born? Do you know where in Africa your great granddad was born?" Uh, okay, so I don't. <laughs> um, I don't know where. I know where my great granddad was born. I know where my great grandfather was born. But I don't know where they were from in Africa. That's a that's less a little that's a little bit that's a little bit out of my jurisdiction. A little bit. I do I do know I do know where my great grandfather is from though. But I don't know where I don't know where they're from in Africa. That's a it's a little bit out of my jurisdiction. But you know it's um I think and I and I'm one of those people who I, I always keep promising myself that I am going to take a genealogy test and figure out where my ancestors come from because that would be cool to figure out. But then I don't know like. To me, genealogy tests genealogy tests are only cool if your parents were somebody significant. Like, you wouldn't care. You wouldn't care to take a genealogy test if you found out your mom or dad was a FedEx truck driver. Like, your great-grandfather was a FedEx truck driver. You wouldn't care. When you take a genealogy test, you want to hear some epic shit. You want to hear, like, your great-grandfather was a man who, who shot the fight, who fought, who... Who shot the final shot that ended the Civil War? You want to hear? You want to hear something epic like that? You want to hear your father, your great, your great grandfather drove FedEx trucks. Your great grandfather worked for UPS. Your great grandfather was a barista at Starbucks. You want to hear something epic? Like I don't know. So I don't want to get depressed. Like I don't want to get depressed because I don't want to. Because when I take that genealogy test, I know it's like 267 years of just slavery, rape, murder that I gotta go to <laughs> researching about my ancestors. No, nigga, I want mine. I want mine to be some epic stuff. I want mine to be something like, man, your dad was a boss. Your granddad was a boss. I don't want it to be something just so, like, boring and shallow. Like, it's, I don't know. Like, I don't know. That's just me. But, 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 then, but, then, but then again, but then also to play devil's advocate, there might be somebody like that in my in my bloodline that I don't know about. You never know. You know, I, there might be. So, I, I don't know. New Orleans VB. I, I've always, I have always fantasized about that too. Like I've always, I've always fantasized and daydreamed. Now it's really not broad set, but do you feel more American or African? <laughs> I feel more American. I feel more American. I feel way more American than African. And I'm going to tell you why. Because, so, the theory that the shout out to Dwayne Sales, how you doing? So. 
the the reason that there are a lot of people in this country, there are a lot of people in North America, there are a lot of people in the United States who they identify with being African because they say that we come from Africa, that black people come from Africa. So we have to identify with that. That's part of our reasons, part of our culture. And that's true. But also to play devil's advocate, the whole world comes from Africa. Like science, if science is all the way true, if science has got it, if science has got it right up until this point, the whole world comes from Africa. It ain't just us. We're just the most recent immigrants from Africa. So I think to a certain extent with African Americans, I think Clifton Pepper was going on with you. I think to a certain extent, even though I do love different cultures, I love Kente cloth. I love African, African reggae music and all that shit. I do think to a certain extent, we do got to kind of take pride in our own culture because the culture that African Americans have created by ourselves it's the shit, you know. We we got our own culture. And it's the shit. It's it's cool. Like we ain't gotta we don't gotta look. We don't gotta look. We don't have to keep looking far. We don't have to keep looking past our own coast and past our own culture to look for a sense of belonging and where we come from. If we just if we just said f at being African right now and just said right now we're we black Americans and we got our own dope shit. This is what we do. And it'd be cool because everybody love our culture. Don't nobody give a damn. Don't nobody really really don't shout to high from Ukraine. Nobody really cares as much about African culture as much as they care about black American culture. It is a difference. It is an extreme difference. When you go to Africa, you got a lot of dudes in Africa that got a rap movement based off of our culture. So I said that to say this. I feel way more American than African. And I, and I think African cultures, I think African cultures are beautiful. I think the cultures, shout out to the nice word. Thank you. I appreciate it. I think the Africa, I think the culture in Nigeria is beautiful. I think the culture of Senegal is beautiful. I think the culture in Togo is beautiful. But I do acknowledge that our culture is grand. Our culture is mighty and it's a beautiful thing. We don't have to look that far for it. You know, and, it, and it's not the, and like I said, it's not to talk bad against Africa because as soon as I get my, my first real podcast check, I'm going straight to Africa. My first real podcast check to everybody listening right now from the Canary Islands and Togo and Gabon, I'm going straight to your city. I'm going, my, my, my goal for the longest time has been to, for about two months, stay in a little rental property in Las Palmas de Gran Canaria, which is the Canary Islands off the coast of West Africa. It's actually owned by Spain, but it's technically Africa. That is always, that is always and constantly has been my goal, and I'm aiming for that, man. Like, that's like, that's always, that's always been my top. Shout out to my man Ronnie, he joined in the podcast. That's always my top goal. To, so would, that's always been like my top goal to get to that point where I can live there. And it just be for two months. Truthfully, truthfully, when it comes to podcasts, that's what I, that's what I would, I think you're right. I oh, thank you. Because have you ever tried to sing? Because I think you can really sing. Eh, I've tried and failed multiple times. Still trying. I'm actually trying to practice how to sing, but it's like, eh, it is not. It's that. I don't know. The, the problem with the problem with the problem when it comes to singing is is because I've I've went to a singing I've went to a singing class I've went to a singing class before, and I went to a singing class. But he said no. <laughs> I've went to a singing class before. And I've I've tried to figure out where my register is and where my tone is at in singing. And the problem with that is, is like when you have a deep voice, there's not really much cool shit you can sing. Out of touch one with side with your baby. There's not really much cool shit you can sing. Like my favorite music is Samba and Pagoji, but you can't really sing like you can't really sing Samba and Pagoji with a deep voice because the the tone, the key of the instruments is so high. Which I can I can get high. I can I can speak high. I, I can speak really high. What's up with you, man? But what's up with y'all to touch one? What's up with you? I can speak really high, but sing really high, like hit the Maxwell notes. That's where that's where that's where it kind of get hard at. That's where kind of get hard at the. Like, hey, y'all y'all might not know who I'm talking about. There was this black singer, but Larry, Larry said that's true. You don't hear too many basses or tender voices with runs. Nah, it just it just don't like even with Barry White. Like Barry White was a rare exception, and to be honest with you, I think Barry White's music was trash. Like I I really wasn't feeling his music. I thought his shit was way overrated. But you know, whatever makes you money, whatever puts food on the table, hey, if it works, it works. I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you one of the few people who had a deep singing voice who really actually could do good. And I've been trying to practice how to sing some of this stuff. Was Teddy Pendergrass. Teddy Pendergrass was good at that shit. Teddy Pendergrass was good at that shit. Teddy Pendergrass, I don't know. How were you when you how old were you when you noticed that your voice was getting deeper? Very well was more of a character than a singer. He was more of a character than a singer. That's true. Out of such one made a good point. He was more of a character than a singer. How old was I? To be real with you, to to be all the way one hundred with you, 
it never really was a process. It just was like, you know, you know how you have a growth spurt when, like, when you were a teenager, you might be a teenager. You know how you were a teenager, you have a like, you go, you have a growth spurt, and you never really notice when it happens. It's just like one day you walk out the room, you're like, damn, I feel taller. Am I taller than I used to be? Like, you walk out, you open the door and walk out, you notice your head is a little bit higher on the. Uh, on like the frame of the door than it used to be. That's shout out to Buttercup. How you doing, Buttercup? That's how that's how it was for me personally. Like when I, when my voice deepened, it wasn't like I. It wasn't. I never. I didn't notice it. Other people noticed it. If that makes sense. Like I. I really didn't pay attention to it until other people started noticing. Because when you were when you were a kid, you know, even now, like he was crying bass. He was crying bass and making the shoulder straight. <laughs> no, for real. Like I. I. It was the sixties. He was crying bass. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, 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 just, I never, I never paid attention to it. The other people started telling me. Plus, like I said, in my mind, even to this day, even to this day, in my mind, where is your, where is your grave? Where is my grave? Where is your grave? Where is your grave? I don't know what that means. But anyway, yes, yeah, so it don't matter. Well, yeah, so that, so we yeah, had to say to that, to respond to that, yeah, I don't know when that hit. But yeah, Teddy Pentagrass was one of the few. Teddy Pentagrass. Teddy Pentagrass was a great singer. To those who don't know who Teddy Pentagrass is, his invoice sounds like Timmy Turner. No, for he said, he said, Ronnie said his invoice sounds like Timmy Turner. No, because because I was telling them that in my brain, in my head right now, like when I talk to people, when I'm thinking, my voice in my mad, in my head, my voice sounds like it does when I was still 12 years old. Like if I can make my if I can speak my inside voice, my inside voice is like like. Like it's like, yeah, my inside voice. Like that's what I like. Look at my inside voice, yeah. Like in my in my brain, that's what my <laughs> in my brain, that's what my head, that's what my voice still sounds like. But I don't know, it's just it's just the game. But no, nah, Teddy Pentagrass was it. Teddy Pentagrass was different because you know we, with Chris Brown and Miguel and Trey Songs, Bills getting the Pittsburgh Doughboy now. <laughs> you got Pillsbury Doughboy in your head. You got Pillsbury Doughboy in your. That was like the gayest. That was like the gayest creature in the world. But I'm not going to talk about him because this podcast might be sponsored by Pillsbury Doughboy. But what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Teddy Pendergrass was 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 unique because with Luther Van, when you think of Luther Vandross, Chris Brown, Miguel, um, who else am I thinking? Justin, even Justin Bieber, Justin Timberlake. When they sung to a woman, they were catering to her. They were wooing her. They were they were they were whispering sweet nothings. They were nice. They would set the mood so nice and peaceful. Peaceful. Teddy Pentagrass. I don't know if you ever listened to Teddy Pentagrass. Teddy Pentagrass would get on there. He be calling. He be howling at you and shit. Girl, close the door. Let me give you what you've been waiting for. Cause I got so much love to give. Can all to you. <laughs> or just screaming at you and they're just screaming at you in the mic. Close the door. That's how you. That's how you really. That's how you know the character of a man by what they say in the first few lyrics of the song. That's how you know the character of the man. Then when uh when Luther Vandross Luther Vandross's top song, what did he say? He said, "Let me hold you tight. Let me let me hold you tight." Team Pain called him Teddy Pender ass down. Well, when he, he was referring to himself, but that probably came from that because that's how Tim, that's how Teddy Pendergrass was. Teddy Pender ass down. Teddy Pender ass down. Like that's that's how he was like, girl, close the door. Let me. He didn't. He didn't. Luther Vandross said, "Girl, close the door." He said, "He said Chris Brown had excuse me, miss." Luther Vandross had closed. Uh, had let me hold. Let me hold you tight. And Teddy Pendergrass didn't even have that nigga said, "Close the door." But sometimes, sometimes women like that. So I guess it worked. Are you college or work? Right now, I'm in the library. Right now, this is a li- This is a library right now. But I think I don't know. Like you, I like singers like that. I like I like singers who bring something unique to the table. I like I like I like I love singers who bring something unique. I always like I said I was I've been on Bruno Mars's dick for like the last two weeks because that dude's just amazing, man. All around performer, singing everything. Like he's he just one of the best, man. Shout out to Bruno Mars, by the way. He's one of those dudes who I feel like don't really get enough credit for being as great as he is. We actually had a good debate about his art artistry about an hour ago on here. But he's a talented cat. Matter of fact, that's what I like it. That's what I like. That's what I like. 
uh-huh, jumped in the caddy like, girl, put some miles on it. Hey, he, he, he's good as a, I'm gonna give it to you. There'll be no darkness tonight. Dun, 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 dun. It's great. That's a, that's a dude. One thing I like about Bruno Mars is as good as you hear him singing on an album, as good as you hear him singing on a song is how good he will sing in real life. Like, I've noticed that about him. If y'all have time, go on YouTube and look up the Victoria. It's something about, bro, bro, hold up, bro, 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 bro. I've been, I, 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 I was going to ask you to take, okay, okay, okay. Bro, I was, damn, I got to go in like five minutes, bro. I was do. I've I've been saying that for the longest. I've been saying that for the longest. Like, I think he's like. I think he's like. I always because I always thought that was me that was tripping. I think he's a good looking dude, but his eye like you can look at him and tell he just got done snorting coke. But he's actually actually got arrested one time for snorting cocaine. But 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 you know what? I'm gonna say this, and this is gonna sound so messed up. I know a lot of people are gonna get mad at me when I say this, but. Bruno Mars can snort cocaine. He's earned that right. He's earned that right. I'm sorry. Bruno Mars, Bruno Mars has Bruno Mars has earned his place and he has earned his place. He can snort cocaine. I can understand that. Like I, at the end of the day, he's a talented artist. I look at it like this. He's he's his music has gotten me through enough tough times to where if he snorts a bag of cocaine, I'll be like, you know what, Bruno, I understand. Young Thug doesn't have that same liberty. Nigga, if Young Thug fuck up once, I'm like, nigga, I'm turning this nigga's music off. Really, Young Thug is a is a, his name is Young Thug, so it's kind of you know, I, if he fucks up, I really don't really gonna be surprised. But like, it's just but it's just Bruno Mars. Bruno Mars has earned that liberty. I understand that Bruno Mars, you got you if you mess up, if Bruno Mars kills somebody, if Bruno Mars kills somebody, I'll still be buying his album. But I don't give a damn. All right, going on now. Shout out to you, bro. Thank you for a lot. Yeah, make sure you cut it. Coke cut, cut, cuts career short though. It does. It does. Yeah, it does. It does. It does, but it does. He might have that up. Truthfully, that might be his downfall, but I'd hope not, man, because he's so cool, man. Like, he's he's so dope. He's just so dope. I like Bruno Mars because, see, when you take people like a Bruno Mars, when you take people like a Michael Jackson, Bruno Mars and Michael Jackson's, why do you call bad kids that bully other kids? Why do you call bad kids that bully other kids? What do you call bad kids that bully other kids? Oh, okay. What do you call bad kids that bully other kids? I don't know. Um, what do you call bad kids that bully other kids? Oh, hell, it beats me. Young. <laughs> stupid. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> what do you call bad kids that bully other kids? Young thug. Young, th- young, young thug. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's that 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 that's kind of a good one. That's kind of a good one. That's only gonna be, but that joke is only gonna be as funny as long as Young Thug is famous. As soon as Young Thug fall off, you gotta switch that to something else. Like, what do you like? You gotta switch that fast. Like, what do you call? Shit. What do you call a? What do you call? Bro? Young Thug is on all kind of drugs. I don't know. I don't know if he's on all kind of drugs. I mean, I do know he always sing about, but that's his generation, man. Like Young Thug, everybody between the age of about twenty-seven and sixteen, that pop and pills. I'm twenty-five. That pop and pill shit is kind of their generation. He looks like a ninety-year-old church. <laughs> He do, he do though. He do look like somebody. He do, he do look like somebody mama at the bake sale. He do look like that. I think. But that's kind of that generation. That's that generation of rap, by the way. That that's that generation of rap, the cokehead rap. That that's that generation, man. Everybody, all them niggas is on pill. Future, all them dudes is. But the difference the difference between them and Young Thug is Young Thug's music go hard and effing pain. Young Thug has some hits. I tell anybody, Young Thug got that fire for you. When he first came up with that song, I don't, I don't even smoke weed. I don't do pills, none of that. But I, I was showing, I was showing the club singing, I'm a stoner, I'm a stoner, I'm a stoner. I'm a stoner, I'm a stoner, I'm a stoner. Dude, that shit happened. That shit was popping. I was like, okay, I like that. That's one thing about hip hop. Hip hop have you singing some songs that are so out of care that are so out of character, so out of your character. You be singing, you be like, 
my foe foe make all this shit but be like nigga when did i purchase an ak-47 gotta go right now but, but gotta go right now like everybody glows